Hello, everyone. Made it home. Sorry, I really love shooting the time lapse going through Atlanta. The buildings are pretty. I was shooting the time lapse going in, and then when I got to the main part of the city, I changed the setting on the GoPro to night lapse, which didn't really work too good. So I hope you enjoyed something pretty cool, at least for the intro. So yeah, little pup was busy here. Hey, you want to come say hi? You want to show everybody? Come here. Come here. Show everybody. I'll show everybody you. This dude right here. Say hi. He said, Look, he's getting big. He's getting so big. Yes, you are. You're getting so big. Man. There you go. Come here. How could you be mad at this face? Look at this. Ah, dog. But seriously. Yeah, so now we gotta fix this little one here, did. I know it's my fault for leaving you, right? This is what I get. This is what I get. Alright, let me fix the hole in the wall. I'm gonna check Peggy with you. Not too bad, if I don't say so myself. I actually took three coats. Because believe it or not, the first coat, the dog came in here and licked it off the wall. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, did. I put another coat on there. And because it was so deep, I just kind of filled it in the best I could. Because if you try to fill that in, the spackling will be so wet, it'll bubble up or just kind of fall out and deform. It won't stick very well. So your best bet is just kind of go in there, fill in the hole with a little bit, let it harden, come back, and then you could uh, flatten it out with the next coat. Um, yeah, thankfully, man, thankfully the dog didn't eat through the wall and make a hole because then that would have been a whole nother process to fix that. So luckily he didn't puncture through the sheetrock. But now we got to go see if we still have the paint left over. Somehow I think the wife used all the paint. I think she just got like a gallon and it barely made this room. Let's go outside and check and we'll talk about something. Look at him, he's getting so big. Yeah, you are. He's getting so big. Little puppy grown. Aw. <laughs> Aw, look at you. You're lucky you're cute. Eating shit rock. Alright, let's go to the sanctuary, aka the workshop. So many of you know I'm an RC car geek. We got the workshop here, got extra parts, uh, all kinds of stuff. You know, I got boxes from the cars. So man, I love RC car stuff. And uh this kind of another reason I came home off a trail. Uh, one of the coolest RCs to ever be introduced, as far as I'm concerned, one of the coolest ever came out and the only people so far that I've seen that have it are YouTubers that do nothing but RC car channels. Uh, that's all they do is RC car stuff. So, of course, the manufacturers send them the stuff because they want uh, reviews. They want the advertising of the channels going out there. Plus, I think they like the feedback of creators going out there using stuff. And they can see what works, doesn't work, what other people outside of the company like and don't like it's pretty good it's kind of a win-win you know they give away a product they get feedback they get free advertising i wish they would do that with me <laughs> but uh, i'm not gonna become an rc car channel man i mean it might be kind of cool but uh you know i would have to fund it and these things can get pricey <laughs> but anyhow so one of the coolest things out there uh came out i checked with my local hobby shop they put it out on facebook to uh for pre-orders so I contacted them because uh, I was on trail I missed the announcement but 
Uh, so I couldn't get in on the pre-order, but I told him contact me. So then I went to every website that I normally buy stuff through, Tower Hobbies, A-Main, uh, Horizon Hobbies, all the big sellers, people that would get lots of these things. And you right now on those websites, you can pre-order. I don't like to pre-order because I have to pay today. And whenever they get around to shipping, so I just set up an alert. Let me know when it's in stock. Uh, even the company that makes this product, I went to their website, said, alert me when it gets in stock. I had lots of alerts going around. Well, a somewhat local hobby shop has them in stock. So I am going to go pick it up today. I waited a couple days for the wife to go back to work. She's been studying for her stuff, but she went back to work today. So it's easier to get yelled at after the fact when I have it than to get yelled at when I'm trying to leave the house and then I come back with it and then she wants to be nosy as I'm trying to like film and videotape. So. Oh, I know that would be entertaining for you guys and I'm pretty sure as soon as she sees it and she's probably going to be wondering where I've been gone half the day because it's a drive. i got to go to Mobile to Hobby Town. That's where it is. I'm not looking forward to the drive. It's going to be a long day there and back. Unfortunately, uh, on their website, uh, it's like you can only pick it up in the store for some reason. However, they ship. It's not shipping. I think Hobby Town's a, a franchise setup. So the only thing I can figure is maybe they have one main warehouse that does the shipping. And if it's in a local store, it doesn't ship. They don't ha have like the local store ship. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Uh, I really wish they would just ship it. I'd rather get yelled at when UPS shows up with the thing, but uh, <laughs> they're not gonna ship it, so. We gotta go hit the road and pick up this pretty cool toy. Alright, we're here. Um, I actually made about 10 minutes early. I went across the street to McDonald's, got a little lunch because I got like another two and a half hour drive home. And uh and I had to use the bathroom. You know, I'm I'm pulling around the building. This guy pulls out of the drive-thru, almost takes out the side of my car, and he starts laying on a horn at me like it's my fault. You you were parked and you decide to pull away. <laughs> So, I want to tell you a funny little story. Uh, you know, when I got out of the Army, uh, I think like the first job I got, I was offered a program at the employment office to get a CDL, commercial driver's license. So, I took them up on that, got my CDL, and I drove over the road for a year. Now, that tunnel, that thankfully we didn't go through because as soon as I got off the interstate, Everything came to a standstill and Google was like red all the way through that tunnel. The tunnel's pretty cool to go through, but <laughs> not when it's jammed up. But um What was it? So you when you're driving trucks, you can't go through if you have placards, hazardous material. So I don't even remember where I picked up the load. I think I maybe I picked up out of Orlando. I had hazmat. I had placards on the trailer. I was coming through at like 2 in the morning. So that bridge that you just saw us go over with the uh, cables and that on it, that's the hazmat detour. And it takes forever. It so takes forever just to avoid a tunnel that's maybe a mile long. So I decided, like, screw it. I'm going to run with it. Not a whole lot of traffic. What can go wrong? You know, it's raining, but you know, what can go wrong? <laughs> so I go in the tunnel, the car in front of me starts spinning out. 
bang, boom, bang, off one wall, off the, I'm in the semi, 18 wheel, you know, I'm like, oh, sh which way to go? And I'm thinking to myself, now, oh my God, if I hit this guy, I am screwed. I got freaking placards. I'm not supposed to be there. Even if it wasn't my fault, some attorney would look at it. I'm going to lose my job. I shouldn't have been there. I have has been there. Luckily, he bounced one way. I went the other way. Went past him. I sat there. My heart was jumping out of my chest. Tell you, man. I thought traffic was bad way back then when I was driving. I saw people going down the interstate and that with laptops open reading newspapers. It's kind of really before cell phones. I mean, we had cell phones, but they didn't, you know, do like the internet and stuff like that. So some people would drive around their laptops in on and they'd be playing movies. Freaking crazy. I can't picture today everybody's so distracted in what they're doing. I mean, it's horrible now in the car. Man. So, you know, two good friends of the channel, KY Chevy and Chicago's Finest Moment. They both drive for a living. Stay safe, my friend. Hobby Town's now open. I'm about to show you the coolest RC car in the world. Or RC vehicle. Um, I'm showing this because I know I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it like an unboxing and a whole uh, product tutorial or like review. And I know some people aren't interested, but I think you guys are gonna be kind of cool, kind of interested just to see just a little bit of it. So I'm just sharing a little bit with you. So cool, I'm afraid. Yes, sir. You can lay that right here if you want to. I'm so afraid of getting in the planes. <laughs> C-130. Well, kind of. Uh, that looks familiar, kind of. Okay, trains, models, a little bit of everything. This thing was badass. RC motorcycle. Check that out. And guess what? I got the last bike they had in stock. I'm so glad I called when I did and asked them to hold it. I was going to buy it online and then I asked them how long it would hold and then they said something weird like 
if you pay for it online, you have like two days to pick it up and then it goes back. So he said, we can just put your name on and hold it. So I said about two and a half hour drive here. I was worried. I was so worried that maybe somebody sold it out from underneath me, but special thanks to Hobby Town here in Mobile for holding that for me. Oh man, what a relief. Such a relief to have it. Oh, this thing is bad. Wait till you see it. It's so realistic looking. I mean, in all the videos I've seen, it's like really easy to drive. It looks like it's gonna be fun. I'm excited. Uh, let's get home and pray for a good traffic going the other way. Look at that. That's all German Shepherd. That's all German Shepherd. She is shedding, and man, when she sheds, whew, it comes on big time. But uh, check this out, man. Whoa. Look at that. All right, so I'm about to film the unboxing and uh, first drive and all that. And I thought about it. I really want to get that video out. So it's going to come before the vlog. But I hope you guys enjoy seeing some of the RC cars. So I'm pretty sure a lot of you won't tune in. Those that watch my vlogs aren't going to tune in for the RC car like review but I'm going to add a little bit of review to here so you can see me interacting with it just I, I hope you enjoy it because I mean come on man that is so cool in my shop I love this the sanctuary look we got the AC working you know I went and bought all these parts <laughs> and so far I really haven't broke anything I guess they just make them way better now. Back when I had Tamiya's, I had all kinds of spare stuff and I always needed it. Always, always breaking stuff. So I got these new vehicles. I watch these YouTubers that do these jumps and all that. I go, oh, this breaks and that breaks. Uh, you know, oh, and the X-Max, get these, uh, these steering knuckles. They break and the skid plates break and gears and stuff and I haven't broken anything yet <laughs> I've lost like one nut on the small one and this cheapy little Amazon thing saved the day so I'm going to film this and I, I hope you guys will enjoy you're not going to believe this I there's the motorcycle I have yet to use it Corgi's excited <laughs> uh so this is the battery that they sold me, right? So when I went online, I specifically looked. The battery that they recommend isn't available. And then the charger that they recommend is a cheap little thing, but they have charger battery combos. So I selected the one I specifically looked. Now every manufacturer uses a different type of connector, right? Of course, they gotta make life difficult. Uh, like Traxxas that makes the X-Max, the sledge, the uh, rustler there, uses that type of connector, right? And then I have the infraction and the felony over there. They use, or they're supposed to use this type of connector. Basically when I bought those, I cut these connectors off and I, I soldered a Traxxas connector to there because I already have a bunch of Traxxas batteries and I wasn't going to invest money into these. Uh, the reason I did this with the motorcycle is the connector is kind of screwed underneath the seat. So it's in there and it's screwed in so you can plug in. If I go to a Traxxas connector, it's just going to dangle and there's a chance it's going to get caught up in the wheel because it's like right underneath the wheel. So I bit the bullet, got the right battery or the one that they call for it, the hobby store gave me the wrong setup the guy even told me he said oh this is a uh, IC3 this is called IC3 it needs an IC5 connector so I was like and I even asked him, I said are you sure I said I thought the one I looked at it specifically said IC5 
I said, is there another one that we're not seeing or something like that? And he goes, no, that's it. And he started trying to piece together something for me. Uh, so then he sells me this adapter, which doesn't work. Because this is a EC5 to an EC3. Echo Charlie versus India Charlie. And plus it's wrong anyhow because as you can see it's the same type of plug it's male if this was an adapter this part here would need to be female and then this part would need to be male to plug into the bike because it would emulate this you're trying to change this to a bigger connector this is wrong so first off these are the same connectors are both males and then the female part doesn't even plug in because, like I said, this is an EC. I need an IC. So, like, one of my battery chargers here, like, this is a Tamiya connector. This is a mini Tamiya, which is, like, the Clodbuster and the Frog back here. And, like, the Red Hot Shot are all Tamiya. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. So, here is an IC3 connector. And then this is what's called like a Dean's connector. Yeah, the, the RC hobby's gotta be complicated with all kinds of connectors. I haven't even touched on every connector that's available out there. But because I changed the plugs in those two, had I kept them original, I probably would have had a 5,000 milliamp. Well, no, I probably would have had a three cell because I think, yeah. Because that one I converted to 3S, so yeah, I wouldn't have had a... I don't think I can run a 3-cell on that bike without frying the electronics. So, I ordered on Amazon the right connector. It's just a connector. And then when it comes in, we're just going to have to cut this off. And uh, well, I'm not going to cut it. I'm just going to unsolder it. You can see right here. You can... You three wires there, you just unsolder it. Please something. I'm still. I'm dying to get. I'm dying to drive that bike. I'm, oh my god, that is. Oh, tell me that's not the coolest thing, man. Tell me you wouldn't come home off trail to go buy that. I'm still grateful for the hobby shop for holding it. They didn't even ask for any money. I, I was even willing. Like I said, I was gonna pay for it online, but they said like two days. Uh, I guess corporate policy. It gets refunded, something like that. But um. They said they put my name on and hold it. And they were true to their word. And they did it. I'm grateful for that. I did reach out to the hobby store to see if they could fix this. Because I spent almost $10 on the wrong connector. I spent a little more than $10 to buy the right connector or this adapter. And then the charger that they sold me ends up being like, uh, I think $15 more. Believe it or not, than the right one. So I think this whole debacle ended up costing me about an extra forty dollars to make it right, because I got the wrong charger, which is more money. I bought an adapter that doesn't work, and I had to buy the right plug. Luckily, it's gonna be an, a next day Amazon, so I'll have it on tomorrow, and I'll we'll have the bike running. <laughs> oh man. But I have the. I feel so good by having it. I feel really good that it's in my possession because these things are damn near impossible to get. Like I said, you could do a pre-order where you put your money down, but they're not shipping until like mid to late July, and there's no set date. It's just like mid late July, something like that. Um, and the red and blue one, or yeah, the red and blue that don't come with the battery packs. Nobody has them. Everybody just says uh, back ordered with no possible ship date and damn if they didn't have one I couldn't believe when he told me he said yeah they're all sold out I guess we were holding the last one for you <laughs> yeah I'm a geek with this I'll find something to blow money on I'll check in with you when I can get this battery plugged in oh I got the connector uh, and today I'm on the late Amazon delivery route but hey, I talked to, I believe it's the owner, maybe it's a manager, I don't know, of the hobby store. He apologized for everything that's going on. And that's all you can ask for. If something happens, you know, 
all you can do is make an attempt to make it right and uh you know he apologized said that the battery charger i was looking at was uh out of stock that the computer inventory had it wrong which is why i called about the motorcycle because that stuff happens and i wanted to make sure that you know the computer inventory showed that they actually had the bike before i drove there and that so not a big deal uh he's gonna give me a, a good deal on a battery an extra battery for the bike when the ones that actually belong for that bike come in uh everything for this bike right now is just crazy in high demand so like the batteries are about impossible to get so so that's all you can ask for so i'm, I'm happy with that you know like i said he apologized and i mean no harm no foul i mean the, the the young kid there he didn't do anything intentional uh he even told me before i got the battery that it was wrong connector just <laughs> and that the harness he gave me wasn't going to work if that would have worked i guess you know <laughs> i would have been riding the bike by now and everything would have been good but you know it's like i said i'm not i'm not mad at anybody at least you know they stepped up and they're gonna take care of it make make it ride with me he's gonna get when the batteries come in he's gonna mail it to me and uh we'll get it taken care of so that's all you can do man so yeah so let's get this bike running Oh man, that RC is fun. That thing is a blast. Uh, thank you for letting me share that with you. Uh, let me turn around and give you a quick garden update. Uh, this is what she's got going on in the green here, greenery here. Her tomatoes or something that she's growing, all kinds of things. But yeah, uh, thanks for letting me share that. That was fun, man. I absolutely love the RC. But check it out. Got five days worth of food here another five days worth of food this is going to get dropped off to us uh, on trail and we'll carry this one it is a little heavy uh, I had some extra food because when I went to Franklin I had a five day resupply in the car I didn't use so the good thing is I have freeze dried meals for the entirety of the trip because using the Nor packets didn't really work the way I wanted it to it's just it is expensive to try to eat freeze dry meals every day but seeing i'm not doing a through hike I'll be out there for about 10 days may as well live a little and i had it so uh freeze dry meals every day um uh, the only difference from what i normally do is every day there's an extra snack so some of those things i showed you in the other videos like lemon coconut bar or something like that i have one of those for every day and i have about four or five items that were just off the side, they're extras, uh, just in case hunger hits and I just feel like I need an extra snack and like, you you know, when you're out there, you really can't dive into like your planned food for the day because maybe you're hungry today. So you eat some and then you're short for the next day and you're gonna put yourself in a bad spot. So it's extra weight, but right now these are about six and a half pounds a piece, a little bit heavier than my normal. Before I was about five pounds of food, maybe a little bit more than five. But I should be good to go. I shouldn't. I shouldn't be hungry, and I should be well nutrition, well nursed with protein bars, Cliff bars for energy. Got some snacks. Got the freeze dried meals. So looking forward to getting on trail. Hopefully, I make it. But uh, yeah. So like I said, after this video, I have two more that'll be coming out. Are like tutorials on stuff and then there's gonna be some radio silence for a while as I finish this hike so that's why you won't hear anything for a while so. thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the video hope to see you uh, when I get back off trail and start posting these videos <laughs>